Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. The objective of this video is to show you how can we design a top L inductive couple two resonator. Earlier on, I have disclosed how we can actually design a top C capacitive couple two resonator. So this objective is to explain why we need to have top L or top C. This will be the part 12 series discussion on filter design. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, firstly, let's understand why we need to use top C or top L couple two resonator. This is also a discussion that I've done previously. This example, I basically discuss how can we design a band pass filter based on parallel resonator. In this example, you can see that once the spec is given to us, for example, once we have the frequency range, once we have the Q quality factor value, once we have the resistor from the source and also from the load, okay, from over this example here, you realize that I basically cannot control the behavior of the bandpass filter frequency response. For example, if I want to have a steeper slope, I will not have some control on this. Also, for example, if I want to have a better insertion loss, again, with these formula rules here, okay, you can't control how much insertion loss you can design. So over here, this example, you probably also see that when I actually do a calculation on L and C value, I have also disclosed that for a L value, this is a very small inductor, which may not be practical. As for C value, okay, I have also disclosed that for C value okay, to be at this big capacitor, it may not be that practical also. However, okay, to use a simple bandpass pass filter okay, using this parallel resonator, okay, you need to live with it. So hence, because of this, we have the top C or top L in order to make the L value and C value visible. So this is one of the reasons why we need to have a top L or top C couple two resonator. Next, okay, I have also shared this in a top C couple two resonator. Okay, I hope you still remember what is low side injection and also high side injection. Basically, the image okay, which is on the lowest frequency at low side injection and the image is at the highest frequency under the high side injection, we need to remove away the image. So therefore, we need to find a bandpass filter that will totally suppress the image at the lower frequency at the low side injection and also at the highest frequency at the high side injection. This diagram here shows the top L couple resonator and you can see that the frequency respond on your left. So from here again, you can clearly see that on the high side, okay, which means that above the f flop or resonant frequency, I actually have a steeper roll off factor. Hence, for this top L couple two resonator, I actually prefer to use it in a high side injection. Because remember, this image, I need to suppress it and therefore, with a steeper roll-off factor at the higher end, I will be able to quite confidently remove away this image. So therefore, for top L couple two resonator, okay, I actually prefer to implement it at a high side injection. Again, let's look up an example in order to understand how to design an inductive top couple two resonator. Okay, in this question here, basically we are tasked to design an inductive dot couple two resonator. As shown below, everything is still exactly the same as the top couple C, 
which I have disclosed early on. You can see that all the parameters, they are the same. Okay, and also this is basically the top L couple two resonator because over here you can see that is a inductor. Basically the inductor separate the two resonator, okay, which I'm going to explain soon. Okay, so this diagram, as I mentioned, okay, basically show the top L couple two resonator. Over here, again, I have explained this okay, on the top couple capacitor two resonator. However, just in case you probably have not looked at that particular video, okay, I'm going to quickly explain how to design this top couple L resonator. Okay, in fact, this is quite similar, okay, exactly, almost exactly the same as the top C couple resonator. Okay, so let me discuss this completely also. Okay, over this diagram, you can see that there are actually two resonators. So this I will denote as resonator one. You can see that they are all connected in parallel. Over here on the other side is basically the resonator two. Again, you can see that they are all connected in parallel. In short, okay, in order to make a symmetric top couple L2 resonator, okay, the C1 is equal to C2. L1 is equal to L2. And over here, you can see that the impedance, they are also the same which means that the source of the resistor and also the load of the resistor, they having the same exact value. And with this, okay, I can declare that this is a symmetric top L couple two resonator. Again, we also have the total or circuit Q, okay, which is denoted in blue. So in this blue basically is, we call the circuit Q or we call the overall Q for this circuit design. So you need to know the difference between single resonator, okay, which is denoted as QR, and also the total circuit Q, which is denoted as QT. In short, this QT is a combination that is contributed by these two, uh, two resonator, okay, while this single resonator belongs to just one part of the resonator, the parallel resonator over here. Same as on the other side, this is another Q, contribute by resonator 2. Okay, let's start by understanding the design rule. Okay, so this is what is given in the question. So I know that resonant frequency is 165 megahertz and I'm tasked to decide to have a bandwidth of 10 megahertz. This is the equation. Okay, so in order to find the total circuit Q of the two resonator, this is the equation, which is F0 over bandwidth Okay, bandwidth can easily determine by using F2 minus F1, okay, which means that the highest frequency minus the lowest frequency. But in this case here, since the question given to me is 10 megahertz in terms of bandwidth, I don't really need to do that. So therefore over here, I just need to do 165 divided by 10 megahertz, which give me the circuit Q as 16.5. Okay, remember, Okay, the single resonator need to be larger than the circuit Q. Okay, because the circuit Q is basically a combination of two single resonator. And in order to find the single resonator quality factor, okay, you need to apply this equation. So this is the circuit Q divided by 0 0.707. Okay, so this is a constant number. Okay, don't worry uh, how I actually obtain this number. So what you need to do in order to make the explanation simple, in order to find the Q of one resonator, for example, the Q of this one resonator, I can take the whole Q divided by 0 0.707, which will allow me to have the Q of a single resonator. So once we've done this, okay, we are ready to design the L and C value. So from the first resonator, let's focus on the first resonator. Since they are all connected in parallel, if you still remember, this is how we can obtain the Q okay, for par parallel resonator, which is RP over XL. So over here, I can relay or reform the equation. So I can make this XL1 as a subject. So therefore, this RP over QR. However, I use this RP is because RP for this case is basically RS, source rather than series. So over here is R source over QR, 
which is the Q of a single resonator. So therefore, over here, I can calculate what is my XL value, which is 42.9 ohm. Next. Okay, once I have found this XL value, okay, I can easily find my L value and also my C value. If you still remember over here, okay, so this is the rules to calculate for inductor, okay, which is WL. W is equal to 2 pi FL. So therefore, I have this equation. So the key thing that I want to achieve is to find my L value. So what I need to do is basically I shift this 2 pi F over. So therefore, my L1 is actually equal to XL1 over 2 pi F naught. And when I actually punch this in the calculator, I can calculate that the inductor value, which is 41.4 nano Henry. Okay, again, please remember this. In order to make the filter symmetric, okay, L1 is equal to L2. So they have the same value for all the inductor L1 and L2. Next, we go ahead to calculate the capacitor. Again, for capacitor, XC1 is equal to 1 over WC. Again, omega is equal to 2 pi F. So therefore, over here, we obtain this equation. From this equation, I can easily compute my C value also. So from here, I can calculate my C value, which is 22.5 picofarad. Okay, one thing you probably can see then, okay, this L value and this C value become reasonable. Or maybe I should say that this become feasible to have this L value and also the C value rather than just a parallel resonator, which I show it to you the L and C value is not practical at all. So by having this top L, okay, this value become feasible in order to achieve the band pass filter response. And last but not least, let's quickly understand how can I find the so-called uh, coupling inductor over here. So again, it's governed by this equation. Okay, so this is QS multiplied by L. Okay, so one component Q is basically 23.3 multiplied by the L value, which is 41.4 over here. So therefore, over here, you can compute that the L12, okay, which is the decoupling inductor, which is 0 0.96 nano Henry. Okay, so this actually give you a very simple understanding of top L2 resonator. One thing I want to highlight as I have done a top C couple two resonator, you realize that the L value and the C value is exactly the same, except the way how we calculate the decoupling inductor or capacitor is different. Okay? However, you can also realize that the number is also pretty close to each other. So I just put one more page to conclude the discussion. So this is the task that is given to me, and I'm actually tasked to design a top inductive two resonator. Okay, all the value that I calculated early on are all denoted in this diagram. So from here, you can actually achieve a band pass filter centered at 165 megahertz with a band width of 10 megahertz. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe once again. Sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys. Bye.